Hello, everybody. I'm here just a touch early. So, Susan Smith, first lady here. Yay! Hello, everyone. How are you? Let me see if I'm halfway straightened out here. I'm not even quite ready, but... There's Charlotte! Yay! Charlotte, well, I've been meaning to call you, sweetie, because I'd like to take you to lunch next week, next Saturday. And then I thought we could head to Michael's Craft Shop and get a bunch of jewelry making stuff. So be thinking, and, and I'll call you and let me know what you think you'd like to get. And I thought we could make some really cute, they're called Boho Bohemian bracelets. You know, things that I thought, you know, you used to make really good bracelets with the ho the loops. So I thought, let's get some really cool funky beads and leather strips and string to wire it up. I don't know. What do you think, sweetie? Oh, and I better plug in my computer or it will die. Okay, th there we are. It brightened up nicely. So hello, Susan. Hello, Vicki. Good to see you. It sounds fine. Great. And I'm going to try to find a fancy restaurant that we know won't have gluten in its food. So I'll see what we can find. We'll have to dress up and kind of look, look fashionable. So, okay. So how is everyone? I have been so busy this morning that I'm not quite ready. I should have had brought down a Coke. And I ran out of time to go get Kiwi. Sorry about that, guys. Sonia! Yay! Uh, <laughs> Sonia was yelling at us. Hello, everyone! <laughs> That's okay, sweetie. You didn't do anything. I know you're not supposed to use caps, but if you're saying hello, then that's okay. <laughs> Mary's there! We haven't seen Mary in a couple weeks, so we're real tickled. Mary, in fact, are you? I think you might be the Mary G that signed up for our Yahoo group. And we can't wait to see you start messaging us. So hello, everybody. Michelle Lang is here. Woo! I love my Michelle Lang. Yes, she's too far away for me to go see her. So we've got a lot going on. I've got tons of pictures. Today, in fact, <laughs> all of a sudden, I saw that Nadine had sent me two emails full of pictures, and I wanted to show them to y'all, so I had to all of a sudden do some editing. So I got those in, and then I've got a couple little things I bought, and some progress, and my best tip, and I'm going to show you how I do it. And is Vicky? Yeah, Vic, yeah, okay. But we got two Vickies, so that's great. So... It is so good to see all of you. So the first thing I'm working on today, and maybe I'll show you how I do a little bit of it. So let me move my camera down. I'm going to start y'all out right away, I tell you. Okay, Mark told me stop touching the camera when I do this and instead use the handles, but I don't know what, I don't know how to do this. Oh, poo. I'm trying to get this down far enough. Let me see. Okay. I am, I've been working on this kitty quilt because I'd like to get it done. And I've decided I'd like to put a little more color in the background, do a couple little other things. So what I'm doing now, I did last night I was down here and I did the outline stitches of it to give it some oomph. I've got it backed with a really pretty fabric, batik fabric, and I'm using polyester batting because it's just a wall hanging and it'll give it some definition. So I've done all of the outline stitching. Okay, so now what I'm doing, and if I had those gloves, that would be really helpful. I'm trying to learn to do domestic machine quilting. I'm not good at this, 
but I've taken, I had a lot more pins, but I've removed them as I quilted that area down. And I've dropped my feed dogs, which normally I don't do, but for this machine, it didn't like me pulling against the stitches. So let's see if I'm, and what I'm doing is I'm just, this is the sky. So I'm just going to kind of do a back and forth, back and forth kind of gentle movement. So let me get my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. And here I go. All right. Whoops. Get my machine. All right. Oops. It said press the up and down key. Okay. It's terrible when you push your pedal and nothing happens. That's not supposed to be right. Whoops. Okay. Okay, now let me show you what I just did. You see what I just did? And this is just some background quilting along with over here. And I'll do that for the background and that'll make these areas puff up. But I'm not going to use the white thread to do the sky. I'm going to go ahead and use matching thread for the sky. But anyway, see how this is coming along? I'm really cute. So, but I do think I'm going to take and put some light, a light bit, um, use ink tense pencils and put some light, very pale blue for the sky and then some greenish color for the grass. But that's what I'm working on. And I've got my binding cut out, not yet piece and folded. But I've got my binding cut out to bind it, and I'm hoping to finish this in the next couple of days. But this is really, really cute, and I cannot take credit for this. I don't have, yeah, I don't have a, a slider. I do have some sticky gloves upstairs, but um, I, I'm kind of hesitant to spend money on a slider because I don't know yet if I'm good enough with a domestic. So we'll see. But anyway, I'll put this aside. Now, I can't take credit for this design. I found it online, and I tried to find who owned it and asked for permission. And I haven't heard anything back. So, but that is not, I'm not making it to enter it in any show. I'm making it for my son. So, it's just something personal. So, well, that was a fun way to start. Now I can turn my machine off. So, yes, and in, in fact, I've heard people talk about using the cutting mats from Dollar General, and I guess you would tape it to the machine so it doesn't move underneath your needle, and that might be really cute. Yeah, aren't those kitty cats cute? Hello, Nadine! So, I guess we'll first start with, what did I buy this week? You'll be, you'll be bored. Not much. So, Andy Deal, I'm going to start calling this my Akko cart because she made me happy by buying one just like it. Except hers has a real nice handle up here. She, I got mine from Ikea, I think, and she might have gotten hers from Target. I'm not sure. Or maybe it was the other way around. Okay. First thing I wanted to show you. I know you thought, Nadine thought, what is Deb doing? Has she lost her mind? <laughs> so, I've been really busy. Now, oh, my retreat is up to 45 ladies. Yes, I got uh, Karen from Georgia's coming, and I got her information. So, that brings us up to 45. We've never had more than 32 at the most. So, this is going to be interesting, I tell you. Oh, you got your cart, Vicky, from Amazon? Gotcha. Oh, Akko got hers from Amazon. Okay. I got mine from Ikea, I think, and had it shipped in. 
and then I painted it. They didn't have them in the cool color, but it was only $24 or $26, and that was my price. You know how cheap I am, ladies? So anyway, I've been working so much. Um, I know it's a huge retreat, and I try to give us tons and tons of table space. In fact, remind me when I show you the pictures to show you the kind of, what is it called? Mm, it is the, the and all of that stuff in um, spreadsheet. Wait, when I show you the pictures, ask, remind me to show you the spreadsheet. It, it Mark did it for me and I couldn't do it otherwise. Now all I have to do is enter the information and it runs all the totals for me. If I delete a day, it re-evaluates the totals. It makes my life so much easier. But, um, but anyway, what I was going to show you is anytime I have, I, I've had a couple evenings where I'm so exhausted and I want to do something, but I'm not sharp enough to work on my LaFleur, which Bonnie sent us pictures of. So what I've been doing is when I find I have a little bit of spare time, I make beads. I've made these beads just this week. That's a lot of nervous energy, ladies, let me tell you. And all of these beads are made from junk mail, every one of them from junk mail, or this made from the wrappers of a Klondike ice cream. So you can make beads out of just about anything. Which Patricia? Patricia Fry's here. We've missed you, Patricia. She was up in the mountains, and they didn't get very good internet, and nice she's back. So anyway, but I just thought I would show you. I've been busy, but that's a mindless activity I can sit and do, and it uses up nervous energy. So every time I get to this time of year, I think, why am I doing this retreat? It's so much work. But then when I get there, it's so much fun. So I, I'm, I'm trying to think about doing a, um, a make, it, make it, take it table again this year. I've done one just about every year. And I also do, we do the most fun game. And I went to a cooking demonstration with my daughter and they did it. And it said, at your seats, Kevin, hmm. <clears throat> and at your seat scavenger hunt. And they'll do something like the first person who shows me a toothbrush and you can't, you know, it's right from your purse or it, with sewing ladies, it's right from your sewing area. You have to, and the first person who shows it, they win, they get to go have a prize. Susan's still not feeling good. I'm sorry, sweetie, gosh. So I do that game, then I do quilt bingo, and oh, I left it in the box. I was going to put it away, but I, I want to show you, maybe next week I'll show you the game I made and how I actually made it, and uh, for very little money. And um, so I do a bingo, and, I, and then we do, I do a word search and a word match, like batik, and you look over in the column and find you know, a wax resist dye process, you know, and you kind of match that. So I do those couple games. We're going to have a woman that shows us her easy way to turn a sweatshirt into a quilted jacket. So we do a lot of fun things and Carol's going to do a make it, take it. But I'm thinking about and what I'll, I'll show you the process next week, thinking about doing meditation squares. And I'll show you that that'll be next week's topic. So anyway, I was looking through all kinds of magazines because I like to bring ideas and I'll put them on a poster board. And then that way the ladies, instead of just saying, here, do a meditation thing, they can kind of get an idea of some examples. So I said, Mark was going to the big Walmart and he's, he's, um, I forget now. Oh, he was, went out to find another water pipe for our RV because the water pipe had broken and he replaced one and then thought, I better replace both. But anyway, I said, can you please look for cheesecloth? And he looked in cooking and couldn't find any, so he went to the paint department, and I told him, don't get the tacky kind. The tacky kind, you don't want that. And it's just 100% cotton cheesecloth. So 
we got three packages of it. And the reason I, I've been wanting some of this, because it's really helpful in making art quilts. It can be so many different things. It could be some kind of sea fan on the floor of the ocean if you're doing an ocean quilt. It could be a cloud. It could be water from a waterfall or wave. It can be a mossy, grassy area if dyed, and it dies very easily. So it, each package, and it was, I don't know, 97 cents, $2, something a pack, and it's two square yards of cheesecloth. So anyway, I'm going to work on dyeing this all sorts of natural colors, and I'll probably dye greens, browns, oranges, yellows, whatever earthy kind of tones. And that way, if I do the Make It Take It, this can be one of their fibers they use to make a difference. So we bought that cheap, cheap, cheap. Now, you know, I told you that, oh, darn it. I just had to put a Jenny buyer, buyer order in. Oh, speaking of the order, her sale started. Oh, it's at the, sh at the shop sale. I'm not driving five and a half, six hours just to go to the shop. Not just for a sale. But she did say at some point she's going to put give us an online people a sale. So here are the fabrics I got from Jenny. And the re whole reason I had to order more fabric was for the border print. Now, you know, I only needed a half a yard more. Wouldn't be very smart just to order a half a yard. So I ordered a yard and a half. Because I have enough of the fabric that goes in these colors to do another project. So I've got a yard of the border for another small project. And here's the half yard I need. And I ordered it Tuesday. No, wait a minute. No, no, no. ordered it last. I ordered it Saturday. So by the time they got in the shop Monday and started processing, very happy. So here is the border that I needed. Because, you know, I'm doing these blocks and putting it all in between the blocks. And I need 72 blocks at least. Now, while I was there, I noticed that my other colors of blue were this one, this one, this one, and... Oops, hold on. There's another one that's really, really interesting, but you'll get my drift. I'm trying to aim for something. Oh, well, there's another one, and it's very dark. Um, I don't know what I did with that one. Oh, well. Oh, here it is. Here it is. And this one. So now, do y'all notice anything, though, about these blues? Is there something that's coming across to you about these blues? Because it's always a problem I have. Anything, blue is my signature color, but there's a problem I make when I find blues to get. Does anybody, whoops, notice? My problem is they're all medium to dark. There's not a single light one in it. I had to correct that. So I looked all around, especially in the sale department. And I, yes, exactly, Susan, too close to the same value. If you make a quilt and they're all the same value, it's dull. It's dull. I was real lucky to go to that last Jenny Byer seminar and she showed us three quilts. One and the main problem she was showing is what people tend to do. They find a, a multicolor fabric they like, and then they use the little dye dots on the selvage, and they pick out colors to match the dye dots. That's not a good idea, and let me tell you why. Because it won't have pop. It's better not to match. You can pick a couple from the dye dots, but you must go lighter and darker than anything fabric. 
if you don't do that, your quilt is going to lay flat. And when she showed us a quilt made with the colors just from the dye dots, it was as boring. It just lacked life. And then she showed us quilts that had lighter and darker. Some of them weren't even quite the same shade, but it, it just electrified the quilt. So that's what I have learned. Remember that in the back of your head. When you're picking out fabrics, you can have your focus fabric. Then you need your neutrals. But find fabric that is lighter and darker. So here is what I chose. And now let me show you. I'm going to pin them together so when I hold it up, you can see what I mean. And it's always my biggest problem because I love saturated color. I love, 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 love saturated color. And if you were to go in my closet, my fabric closet, you would say, hmm, this girl has a little problem picking out the light color fabrics. My eye always goes to the rich dark colors. But now, whoops, I almost did this. Hold on. Sorry about this, guys. Okay. Now see what I mean. Do you see the difference? Come on, hang up there right. Do you see the difference now that I have this fabric right there? You can already see that it makes a pop. Your eye goes, whoa. Okay? And if you get your eye... To, to go into the quilt, then it will move around looking at all the other fabrics. So that is my pop color. I got it the other day and I already made at least four because what I noticed is that I had a light and dark green. That's good. And I had a light and dark gold. That's good. Now, I did find, though, I didn't have enough of the golds. So, I just bought a half yard each of these. But I bought more gold. And then I bought a half a yard of gold and a half a yard of that light blue. So, I'm really happy that I did that. And uh, the gold and the light blue, I think, might have been on sale. But the border wasn't. But it's still 11 something I'm sorry, ladies, but I think she's reasonable. I really do. I mean, I, I know the prices have come down a little bit, but I think that Jenny's a little sensitive about, she has so many free patterns, and then her fabric is always reasonably priced, and some of her sales are amazing. I want to show you while I'm talking about sales, please don't forget Pineapple Fabrics is sales coming up October 17th, 18th, and 19th. There's going to be a special speaker, and I forgot to I forgot to write down who it was, but I'll be going on the days that that special speaker speaks so I can record it for you. And as you see, Fabric by the Pound is back. Yay! And I told Mark, I've been so good. I'm buying some fabric. I've already warned him. Oh, and it was so cute. Recently, I was talking about, you know, not buying much and, and talking about Mark. He said, you don't think your ladies think I really tell you you can't buy something or you can, do they? And I said, honey, they know we're, I'm just teasing. I mean, yeah, he goes, huh, do you real? don't you have enough fabric? But he doesn't, he doesn't control me. If he did, I'd bop him one, let me tell you. <laughs> But it was so cute. He said, you don't think your ladies think I tell you what to do? <laughs> it's like, honey, you try to, but it doesn't work. <laughs> so, and uh, anyway, and then I wanted to show you. Boy, this camera, I'm not getting it quite back far enough. I wanted to show you. Let me make sure I don't have it closed. Okay. Oh, don't, don't show my wrinkles. <laughs> okay. There we go. I finished the project bag I was working on. And I took off the binding and made it narrower. Then I took the wide areas I had cut out and made handles. And inside the handle, I put some fusible. 
a heavyweight interfacing and then stitched along each side. I tried to make this nice because it's going on the prize table. So I tried not to be my speedy Gonzalez that I normally am uh, at the machine. But here's the top and the zipper. I said, Deb, do a nice job. I want the ladies to feel like they got something nice. So, and, and Mark said, well, it's not that big. I said, well, it's just for a project. So it didn't need to be overly big. But see, you zipper, and then you can go inside. And he said, ah, I get it. It's see-through, so you can see what project's in the bag. Smart man. So anyway, I think I'm going to make at least one more of these to put on the prize table. And, uh, and the nice thing about it is, is it folds up very easily, and then you just put it in the drawer until you need it. So, do you like that? <laughs> I have been, I have been busy. I've been really working hard. But I said the only way that I'm going to get caught up is to get busy. So, and what my goal is now you ladies listen I'm, I'm i'm say a goal pardon me just a moment okay my goal is to have everything done for the retreat in the next week and that means the block that we're going to have a raffle block that means packing all of my stuff if i'm gonna have a make and take have it all ready to go get everything I need done, have the meal tickets all in there. Everybody, everybody gets an envelope with their receipt and their meal tickets. Have those completely done. Have all of that done so then I can relax before the retreat. Because you know what the problem I have is I get so exhausted. Then when I get there, I just want to stay in the camper and sleep. So, Teresa's here. Hello. Has anybody else snuck in that I didn't know about? It is so good to see you. And yes, I am going to have a live stream from probably Saturday. Yeah, because everybody leaves on Sunday. At Some leave Saturday at night or Sunday morning. So, probably from Saturday, unless there's a day during the week. But see do it during the week and the dean can't be here so i will i'll make sure i let plan it and let you know when i'm going to do and i'd like to do it the same as i did last year and have the ladies do their show and tell and then go right into our live stream so you get to see the show and tell so because i love showing y'all ideas i don't know about y'all mary Teresa, is there oh <laughs> and i wanted to show i love looking at other people's quilts because it gives me ideas it gets me excited gets me planning something so okay good we'll do a show and tell and then the live stream so i'll plan it that way all right i've got numerous things to show you and one side benefit you know we've got these woolly mats now one thing i've been liking is i can put my sewing project on it and then get up and walk around if I need to move it over here or move it over there so I saw a woman one time she made I'm trying to think of what she used but I'm thinking about using making some project boards because you know sometimes I work on something for a little bit and then I need to do something else wouldn't it be nice to have a project board maybe a foam oh I just had an idea what if I took foam core um, you know, foam core is like this, kind of rigid, covered them with felt, I mean, uh, and then I could use that as project boards. That might be a good idea. So, anyway, but I just wanted to show you, I really like, and the thing is, the more, the more you pick this up, the less stiff it will be. So it's probably good to get foam core, cover it with flannel. So maybe I'll work up, 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 I will work up a, what do you call an example thing you work up? Prototype, and then I'll show you. There we go. Usually if I ask myself the question, the brain goes, 
turn on. She needs you. <laughs> I wanted to show you something. I've got pictures. I went outside. Oh, Diana Wright is not here. Uh-oh. I hope she's all right. And I'm worried about Diane 57. Please be thinking about Diane 57. Her husband had double pneumonia. Then she got sick. And I'm really worried. So I've got to check in with her. But today in the pictures, we got tons to show you. Oh, I'm so excited. Nadine took some gorgeous pictures. And I have been noticing outside, we got our first rain in a month. It had been that long since it rained here. And I'm going to have some loss due to it. Um, a lot of viburnums, um, bushes that were really old, but just couldn't take a month without water. And my water bill was $173, so I couldn't keep watering but so much. But anyway, make a long story short, some of my flowers are in their waning days. You know, it's like, it's so funny. I love my caladiums, but they reach a certain point and their little clock goes, time to hibernate, and the leaves just fall. And I keep all my pots watered and my flower beds just right close by. But I wanted to show you a plant that has given me such joy this year. I don't know what I've done differently, but evidently I've done something. And I've had a recurrence of bloom when normally I only had blooms in late May to early June. And anybody know what this is? Can anybody figure out what this flower? I'll give you a hint. It has a fragrance that is intoxicating. The flower leaves are slightly waxy, is what they call it. They're thick flower leaves. Gardenia! Akko! Woo! Susan, that was an excellent guess. It's just smaller than a magnolia, but excellent guess. It is a gardenia. Way to go, Akko. This, I, two of my gardenia bushes have a couple little blossoms on them. I feel like that is such a gift. It makes me want to cry. I went out and said, I got to pick one because I, I, I carry it with me all around the house. If I go to the living room, I take it in there. I, I'm a silly thing, but I get very, I get emotional about things like this. But isn't that, isn't that just wonderful? Oh, gosh, I wish I could send you this smell. And this is probably my last grape tomato. I went out. In fact, I got a picture. I wanted to show Susan and Rick. It's the only way I can try to grow tomatoes, but it's pitiful looking. But I did find a little gift. And since it started ripening, I have to pick it or the squirrels beat me to it. And the thing that makes me mad, they take one bite and leave it. It's ruined then. So I grabbed it. I'm going to sit it up in the kitchen near the window and wait for it to ripen. So, and my snack today are a few grapes. Y'all, I've been going through these grapes. I don't know what it is, but I've been going through these grapes. So every week, Mark's been buying me three pounds, and I eat them all. So anyway, okay. I'm going to catch up with what y'all are doing. And then we'll see what to do next. Oh, Akko wants to know if she gets a prize. <laughs> Akko, that is so funny. You know, we will have to work up. I do. I love it. My kids, I would always ask them questions. And, and they were like, you're always testing us. But I made sure it was questions that I knew they had a pretty good chance of asking. Anyway, gosh, it's so good. It is so good to see you guys. And wait till you see the quilt I've got to show you. I'll give you a hint. It's a Jenny Buyer. It was a block of the month two or three years ago. Okay, so I'll show you. Also notice we have Cheryl Lemon's quilt and Miss Nadine's quilt hanging up, as always. I, I couldn't do a show without them hanging there. I mean, it's like, got to be. All right. Oh. 
That's a great idea. Vicki Rob Robles said, foam core covered with flannel, taped to the back, but she wanted to glue binding on it so it's pretty. What a great idea. So, I'm glad Bonnie is safe. No flooding, please. Let me turn this fan down. I've got a fan over here, and it's freezing off one of my ears. Night Blooming Jasmine. I've, heard, I've never seen one, but I've heard it smells so good. So, oh, I'm lucky that I have the gardenias in my front yard, but they're right by the front door. The deers aren't, deer aren't brave enough. Oh, i got to tell you, Susan. Every year, I buy little ornamental gourds from the grocery store and decorate. Because I'm like a fool. I got to put them on the mantel, the tea table, and it just celebrate fall. Well, I have this ha habit now. If they don't dry well, if they start to mold or whatever, I toss them out the front door to the right in my flower bed. And it's a flower bed that I don't do that much with. So I toss it over there. Every year, one, one at least one plant from the seeds, because I let them lay there and rot, and the seeds grow. And I get this big, huge vine, and Mark's like, you want me to take this out? No, 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 that's precious. I looked out there, and the one that's, that had the seeds that produced last year was little miniature pumpkins. And I've got at least two in the front flower bed. I am so excited. So I thought, ooh, I better, the vines have died down. So I better go get them because I don't want them to get any rotten spaces or have something eat them. But I just get so tickled. I mean, just little teeny things. How cute. So it, it doesn't take much to make me thrilled. Anyway, I tried telling Mark when he first met me, I'm high maintenance. I mean, I'm low maintenance. I said, you know, it doesn't take much to make me happy. I'm low maintenance. But after, you know, you look at this room and the fact that I've got a, a frame room upstairs and I wanted to renovate the house and stuff, he says, honey, you're not low maintenance. Yeah, he's probably right. Oh, Karen Cole is here. Hi, Karen. It is so good to see you again, Karen. That is wonderful. Oh. Oh, the birdhouse gourds. Yeah, if they've molded, don't keep them anywhere in the house, honey. You'd have to find a shed or something to put them in. Because I know you have to let them mold so that the fleshy part of the gourd will slough off. And then you can have the hard part of the gourd. Yeah, don't let any gourd mold anywhere near you, sweetie. I know you can't just leave them outside without risking them rotting through but maybe there's a shed or something. So, <laughs> there you go. I love you, Bonnie. Bonnie's such a good friend. And wait till you see her, uh, LaFleur. She sent a picture of the block, and I'm so excited. So, all right. I'll give you a choice. You can see the quilt of the day. You can see my invention for how to organize blocks for a quilt, or you can see the photos. What's the first thing you would like to see? Oh, I'm so glad you're here, Karen. So you get A is the quilt of the week. B is the method of doing organizing blocks for a quilt, or C is the photos. Uh, Susan Smith said photos. That's what we're going for. All right. Oh, Sonia said block of the month. That'll be number two. All right. Here we go. I'm going to turn down the lights because I think it really worked last week. So hold on and I'll be right back. Let me close the curtain. Turn down the light. All right. Okay. You know what? I love our Sundays. I just, 
I just get so happy when I visit with you all. I love it. Okay. Let's see if I can pull that curtain a little. Good. Yeah, I think turning off the lights has been good. Oh, we're up to 29 people. That's, guys, that's about our highest yet. Okay, Mark said, don't touch the camera. Touch the, okay, whoops. All right, whoa, okay. I'm, try, I'm trying very hard to do a better job because I love you guys and I love you sending these in. And uh, it's so much fun. Whoops, why isn't, that's weird. Okay, now let me go to my photo album. Hold on just a second. Hmm. Let me see. Hold on just a second. Make sure that nobody. Whoops. Susan, I hope you're going to be okay, sweetheart. Goodness gracious, darling. Okay, I don't think we have any new. Just wanted to double check. All right, now let me go to photos. Oops, did I leave our channel? I hope not. I better not have. Okay, there it is. Okay, good, good, good. All right. Sorry about this. Hold on. I want to make sure I get it really good. I want to just show you one more time Akko's beautiful, beautiful um, quilt blocks. And now since she has her cutting done as well, I have a feeling we'll soon see more pieces done. But I thought that was so beautiful. I put this in my her, her picture. And now let me go to Sonia's. And remember, Akko's is all hand sewn, guys. That is pretty amazing. Now, where's there's here's Sonia's, and um, um, so every time, I mean, she's amazing, but she does absolutely exquisite work. We have some very talented ladies. I mean, look at this. Isn't it beautiful? So even and beautiful. Good job. Good, good job. I love looking at all of your work. It means a lot. All right. Now I'll put this down. But I just wanted to show you, I put them both in my video, which was so much fun to be able to show because I had mentioned them in, in, while we were doing the group. Okay, let's go to Miss Bonnie's here. And now this is a woman who knows she does beautiful work. Because I don't show you the back of the stuff I do. Are you kidding me? Like I would show you the back of what I do. But this is all her buttonhole stitch. And I guess, did you, I guess she did them by hand or did she do them by machine? I'm not sure, but that's really pretty. So now, I used to do cross stitch and, and, and different cruel work. And the ladies were always talking about the back should be as neat as the front. And I'm thinking, what world do you live in? So, <laughs> I couldn't handle that. But here is her Miss Bonnie's Lafleur um, block, and it's just absolutely beautiful. So great work, Miss Bonnie. That is lovely. So elegant. All right, now let's go back. Diana, I wish Diana was here, but here's a block she made for her mother-in-law, and I think it's lovely. And she made it with rayon. And any of you who've ever sewn rayon, no, it it kind of has the consistency of silk, and so it can be a little bit tricky to sew. So I think she did a great job with that, and I do believe I have one more. There's the back of it. So and and she's new to sewing. Um, so she is new to the making of clothing. So I think that's phenomenal. Great work, Miss Diana. Okay, I'm a sh oh, here we go, Nadine. This is wonderful. If you've ever wanted to know what Germany is like, it is such a wonder. 
seeing her photos. She went into the, the village where Martin Luther lived. And, you know, he was the founder of the Lutheran church. And, well, she went to a big pottery festival they had. And... Oh, I just love it. So I'm going to show you. Sit back and you get to see what's on the other half of the world. Let me. I love those blue and white pots. Oh, my gosh. It's beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? Lately, I have been watching the Great British Throwdown. And it's a pottery competition show. And I love it so much. Okay, let me. Great pictures. Oh, Nadine got a happy box the other day, happy mail, where she got an order she had placed. And I think the store is from Wisconsin. And, okay, I do need to turn this. Let me see. Here is one of the pictures from the pattern. Looks really cute. Nadine has taken to using wool, and she adores it. So she ordered some wool and some patterns with a look at that beautiful wool. What colors. Oh, my gosh. So I know that made her happy. Look at that box. Wouldn't you be happy if that was in your mail also? How exciting. I love that. And then here is a man at the Pottery Festival they went to. Isn't that awesome? Throwing a pot right there. In, in throwing the pot live. That's amazing. Okay. I always thought I'd love to be a potter. But you know what? I think my time has passed to try to be a potter. My shoulders are too fragile. But look at the, isn't that a, look at the architecture there. How wonderful. I wish that in here in America we had the big open um, courts courtyards and things where you could set up vendors and, and festivals. Isn't it cool? And this, oh, I should have read more. Maybe she can tell you while I'm showing the pictures, but it's a priest and I'm trying to think of who that I guess they're doing something with Mar about Martin Luther and his time there. I mean, he was huge in the history of the world. And this woman looks like, looks, I first thought maybe she was cooking something. But I'm not really sure what she's doing. I'm sorry, I wish I knew better. Look at this kiosk, isn't that cute? Oh my gosh. Everything to me looks like a fairy tale, Nadine. It is just so beautiful. That is an awesome sculpture. And look at the cobbles, this, the court, what do you call it, piazza. I know they call them piazzas in, in Italy, but it's lined with cobblestones. And if any of you didn't know, the cobblestones are in so many port cities because they were used as ballast for the ships. And so the ships would either stock up on cobbles or drop them off. And it turned out that they ended up using them to make the streets. So... Look at the beautiful work. Oh, my gosh. I love it. This is one of Nadine's quilts she just finished. And I think this one was probably about her first um, foray with wool. And she look at her. She did a great job with the meandering so that her flowers and the bee and the leaves just pop right out. I just love it. Good, good work. And she's still a young one, y'all. So she's got lots of years and lots of quilts left to make. Look at some of this pottery. That cobalt blue in the back is just too gorgeous. Oh, my gosh. Beautiful. Look at this. I bet you you could put those out in the garden. I wonder. Beautiful. Gosh, I love blue. It is my favorite color. Now, this is a, um, a new block that Nadine just started working on. It's just gorgeous. Okay. 
There's some more of her stuff she's working on. Ah, this is on her frame. Way to go. I love seeing her frame. And look at this beautiful pottery. Oh, my gosh. I love that stuff. Now, this is this plate pierced for decoration, or is it really pierced through? That is just beautiful, hon. I love that mug. Oh, it looks like a sheep under an umbrella. And a little hedgehog. Oh, my God, that's so cute. Because, you know, um, Nadine loves her hedgehog. And that's her order again from Butter Basin. I heard great things about that shop. How nice. Another photo of that beautiful building in the back. You know, that's the one thing we don't have here. We don't have those hundreds and hundreds of years of history. Evan Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, the Wittenberg Center. Oh, wow. That's neat. Okay, so that might be the last one of hers. So let me close this out. Yep, that was the last one. Boy, wasn't that wonderful? I feel like I've been on a trip. Um, okay, let me just show you. You remember last week I was talking about the new TV? Well, this is a terrible picture, and I apologize. It got all blurry, but I thought I would show you the picture of the TV. And here is a picture of it on. It's been very exciting, especially to watch nature shows and uh, pictorials of different countries. And isn't that beautiful? I think this was in Britain. And then this is something you probably saw on the Quilt Show uh, newsletter. This quilt is a miniature quilt that has 4,600 or 4,300 pieces in it. And you can see the size of the ribbon. The ribbon is almost as big as the quilt. And it was done after a quilt of 1875. You know, I forgot the woman's name. I'll have to put it below. But then look at this close up. Oh, my gosh. Little tiny pieces. And that many pieces in what is a miniature quilt. That is exquisite. Just exquisite. Way to go. Look at this. Look at this. You can see the size of her stitches, and it was done by machine, but that'll show you just how tiny the little strips of fabric when you look at where the stitching shows. Isn't that amazing? And she did stitch in the ditch as her quilting. So absolutely amazing. Okay. Now, if you don't mind, I, well, I've got a couple things. Well, I'll do the garden first. All right, so I went out because I said, you know, the garden's going to fade now. But these, this is a dragon wing begonia. And you can see how tiny the pot is compared to this plant. Last year, I saved them over in the garage and put them out this spring. I'm going to do the same thing again. And I didn't even have to cut them back. They will just put out leaves on the same branches that are kind of bare. And so I'm going to save them again, and next spring I'm going to repot them so they can have fresh soil because I'm sure they have used up every bit of nutrients that these baskets gave me two years of such beauty. I know Mark's not going to be happy that I put them back in his garage because they're going to drop leaves and flowers, but that is worth saving. I mean, they're like four feet across. Isn't that amazing? And here's the front porch. I showed you back earlier when I was sewing the pillows. Look how huge these caladiums have gotten. I love caladiums, ladies, because they just are amazing. And then I have two little pots here, and there's some spikes in those. And uh, geraniums, it was too shady for the geraniums to do well. But the sweet potato vines, look at the sweet potato vines. They just did amazingly. And there you see me in the doorway. Oh, how nice. <laughs> he, 
Here is one of my, this is a brand new gardenia right here. And it was one of the ones blooming the other day. I had a diff, an old gardenia there. And for some reason it died last year. But here, this little flower right here, I hope you can see it good. It's called a naked lady. The reason it's called a naked lady, it comes up from a bulb, but the flowers come up without any leaves. Then after the flowers die down, the leaves will come up. So you forget where you've planted it because it only pops up for a short period, but it's called naked ladies. And I just think that's so cute. And here are some salvia. I like planting for the hummers. Let's see. And there's um, a brand new rose that I put in this year. That's doing pretty good. I wish I had more sun and some more salvias. The salvias ended up doing very well. I was pleased. A couple little begonias and a purple flower, purple cone flower right there. But I just get so much shade, ladies. It's hard. These are on my back deck. It's like the sunniest I get. But I love the lantana. And then this is also a sweet potato vine. And then this is the New Guinea impatient. And there's grommet. My grommet goes with me everywhere. Here's another caladium. They are my go-to plant now. They just put bloom their little well they leaf out their little heart out because these are both new guinea and patients and this is probably a um sweet potato vine and then my shrimp plants everything's kind of winding down so i just thought this is the last chance i can show you and here's the little cigarette or cigar plant a regular impatient the wishbone flower right here and caladium and here's my good old bronze leaf begonia. This is a sweet little, um, it's one of those massively blooming petunias. I forgot, wave. It's a wave petunia. And today, the plant that was in that pot died. And so I just, with my bare hand, grabbed it out of the pot down here, took it up there, just stuck it in the pot, and darn it if it hadn't kept growing. Okay, now let's see. This is a maple, maple syrup pot. So, Miss Akko, you might be familiar. It used to be you'd put it on a tree when you tapped it, and the sap would run down in it. And a friend painted that for me 20 years ago, and I love that. And here are some hanging pots off of the back deck. Here's my gardenia that I was telling you about. This is the one that's out back, and it's got two here, one here, one here, and one that I picked off. I love it, gardenia. Here are some just, they're still, still blooming away. They're trying. And there's that uh, maple syrup or maple, maple sap pot. Again, I love that thing. And then, this is for Susan and Rick. This is my tomato plant on the back deck. The first tomato is made. The tomato is the size of a golf ball. And I go out every day and give it a pep talk and say, keep going. I know you can do it. I know you can do it. <laughs> but, oh, my gosh. Uh, and here is a New Guinea impatient. It's right outside my studio door here it has done beautifully these are my poor little grape tomato plants this is the only way I can grow tomatoes in this yard and they look pitiful but if you see right there is that little great tomato I picked off and brought in today but they they did they gave me a couple handfuls, and you know what? I'll plant them again next year. It was worth it just for a couple handfuls, but I'm going to put all new soil in there for them, too. And here are some geraniums. These are near my sidewalk. And then in the back here, this is lamb's ear. I don't know if you've ever seen lamb's ear, but the colonials, the colonial um, settlers used it because it's furry, like a lamb's ear. And um, they used to wrap it around wounds. It acted as uh, an organic bandage. So 
So I love having that. It's when you pick the ear, when you pick a leaf of it, it's so soft and furry. Here is my a little. This is it's hard it's hard to imagine, but this has it only holds a half of a cup, and every year I have to very carefully plant it with a little bit of clay at the bottom. So the best soil I can put here and a little bit of clay in the top near the front edge because it is so hard to keep this thing watered. And I put sedum, so it's made for desert areas. And so the leaves are real juicy, kind of like thick and succulent. And uh, But I've been real pleased. Every year I plant it, Mark says, that thing's not going to work. And it does. When I water it, I soak the whole little sculpture because that way it absorbs, it's concrete, it absorbs the moisture and puts it out. And then here is a little bloom, one of the last little blooms of my butterfly bush, Badlia. And um, the butterflies do love it. And it's a rangy, weedy looking bush, but it's worth it for those precious nectar flowers. And they love it. Okay, so that's that for my flowers. And here is, okay, Th this is now, we'll work into showing you how to set up a quilt board. What I did is I've made, I, yeah, as of the other day, I had made 13 blocks. And let me get this up. And so what I did is I took them upstairs and I took pictures of them. I laid them on the floor and tried to get over top to get as even as I could. And you don't quite get even because you see, you know, if you can't be perfectly over top of them, the edges get a little bit distorted. But I try to do the best I can. And then I take and edit the pictures, trying to keep them in size. And a couple I did separately. So this is the first picture I took. And then I edit them to get them broken up into units that will fit on a piece of paper. Okay, I think that's pretty much that. All right, now let me go to the piece of paper and let me show you what I do next. Okay, but that's my floor and that's the blocks. And then I edit it down to just the blocks. All right, now let me go back. Hold on just a second. I don't think there's anything else to show you here. All right, now I have to go to... Hmm. Let me see. Give me just a second, because I'm showing you this. This is the best way I have found to... I, I'm not young anymore, and bending over to put stuff on the floor and rearrange them is not something I like to do. All right, so now, I believe it or not, this is in my Word program. I find it easier to edit this in my word program than anywhere else. So what I do is I first take the pictures and I take them over to Adobe Photoshop and I try to square them and get them the best I can. And then I, then I went and I cut just this row off because I knew I could fit that in right here because I'm cheap and I don't like to waste paper. And I figured I needed at least 72. So four times I did the block of 12, same block. Then I put the little strip. And that way it gave me four times 12 is 48. And one, two, three, four. One minute. Oh, here we go. Five. Five times three is 15. I did five of these. Okay. Five times 12 and then five little strips. So the five little strips would give me 15, and five times 12 is 60, so that gives me 75 blocks. And I have to do the math. It's painful, I know. But I go and put this in Word, and then I get them lined up. And to make sure you get them the same size, get this set worked out so it's the biggest it can be to fit what you need. Then take and copy this and paste it below. Because if you try to do it from separate pictures, you'll never get them the same size. So then after I got this, then I went to the printer and I printed it on cardstock. Okay. And now let me get rid of that. And 
Let me turn the light on and get it all back, and I'll show you what I did the next step. Now, let me close this out and come back to y'all. There we are. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Karen, nice to see you, sweetie. Come back anytime you can. And Karen, I don't know if you belong to our Yahoo group, but we'd love to have you there. Open up windows here, ladies. Be right back. Okay. Okay. It is so good to see you, Karen. I hope to see you back very soon again. Okay. Mark was right. It does help just using the little knobs. <laughs> oh, shoot. Now I have to tell him he was right. So, okay. Then today, I got down here, and I took a piece of foam core, and I cut this out so that it becomes an easel that now I can sit like this, and let me tilt. Okay, these are the blocks, and I took, oh, I, I took my paper cutter. I have one of the sliding paper cutters, just a little $10 one. And I cut, I cut these little blocks out from the cardstock, okay? Then on the back, I did a little roll of painter's tape. Sorry, I got a little ink on my hand. Did painter's tape, and that way I can then stick them on this board and try out different kinds of of patterns. Now, just to show you, this is what they did on the pattern we got. This is a Judy Niemeyer. But I'm going to try to find my own, and I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do or how I'm going to do it. But, you know, you've got like something like this, and you've got something busier and it just tries to show you how they spin them and turn them and what kind of design you can make. So I tried here just doing this design. And then this time I put it this way. So, you know, I'm just kind of, I'm just playing with them. And I kind of like this one. I, I think that's going kind of good. So... I just wanted to show you this is how I play with it. And the nice thing is, let me get this. This is not, how do I make this bigger? There we go. Um, but I can take this upstairs with me. And by putting the little painter's tape, it's easy to take off and easy to. There's Narnadine. I'm sorry about that buffering. Gosh, I might have to end up talking to my server and make sure it's not me but anyway but i just use a piece of foam core cut this part off the end put it on with packing tape and that way i can put it flat for storage but lean it out and put it up like that diana wright is here yay honey oh tell your son happy birthday so anyway this is this will give me a lot of opportunity to play with where to place color, where to, how to turn the design. And then once I've got it exactly where I want, I leave this, set it up beside my sewing machine, and put the blocks together from that. Isn't that cool? So that's what I am doing. That is what I am doing. All right, so that's that. Now that's that part. And before I go too far, because um, the last thing I'm going to show you is what I'm going to try to work on this week. Because I've missed working on it 
and it's very exciting to me. All right, now let me turn the Dean's beautiful quilt around and show you this week's quilt. This is a Jenny Buyer, and it hasn't been quilted. It's a floppy, and they call them floppy because they're floppy. <laughs> this is my Jenny Buyer quilt from about two years ago, I think. And it has applique on it. It has curved piecing. Or did I applique it? Hold on a second. I don't remember. Nope, it was curved piecing. And you know what? It wasn't that bad at all. And I tried to go something out of my comfort zone and do a different color scheme. So it's very, very pretty. I'm hoping. I brought it down because I want to get the backing cut the right size and go ahead and get it on the frame. I'm just so anxious now to get some of these things done. So I'm glad you love it. So it's very bright, isn't it? It's, it's very pretty. So that was, I think, from like two years ago. And I, it's funny. I look at my applique and I do it better now. <laughs> so it's a funny thing. But anyway, so, yeah, so there is that. And one second. What I want to, whoops, hold on. I have runaway yarn. Okay. What I want to work on this week. Really, really, really want to work on it. I'm dropping everything under. Come on. Come on. Oh, look at the dust under there. If you ever want to find out if under your furniture is dusty, send a spool of thread under there. <laughs> so what I did is I went up the other day. Oh, what are you having for supper? I'm having, we have the most wonderful, wonderful Chinese restaurant around the corner. I wanted to make chicken salad. Mark's not a big fan of chicken salad. So, he know, he comes and says to me, what he always knows will work is, how about Mr. Lou's? <laughs> and he knows I go, sure. <laughs> so, but I, I went upstairs because I really, really want to get some good work done on this. And I went upstairs to my yarn drawer. I have the best sister and former sister-in-law, and when I put out a call for any bits and pieces of yarn, she and her friends got together and gave me a whole case of all kinds of bits and bobs of yarn, st mostly stuff they bought that is too hard to work with. It's perfect for me. So I brought all that down to add to the jungle, and then I also went through my thread stash and picked out some different threads that I thought would work good with this. And so this is what I'm going to work on this week. Now, when I say work on it, you know that I don't have a large, a long attention span, right? We've, we've solved that problem, haven't we? And uh, or established that idea. So what I'm going to do is I'll be working on this. I've got to thread paint the other side of his face. Because remember, I only did this side. Now I need to do that side. And then I need to put leaves and stuff. And I'm going to, I forgot who told me. Was it Diana Wright? I'm going to use pipe cleaners to give the leaves some shape and definition. 3D leaves that are kind of hanging front. And then I'm going to take all of these yarns and threads and make a jungle for him. So I am very, very excited. So that's what my goal for this week. Now, in between working on this, I will finish the little kitty quilt that I showed you. Whoop. Okay, let me get this back over there. I will, sh I will work on finishing quilting and then binding the kitty quilt. Get that done. And 
I will work on my Judy Niemeyer blocks. And then I'm going to make my raffle block for the retreat. Maybe clean the house. <laughs> so what are y'all going to do this week? Because I would love to know. What what are y'all? What do y'all have the plan? Yeah, Shere Khan. I love that name. Everybody I've told says, "Oh, that was great." She thought of Shere Khan. So, what are y'all going to be working on? I'd love to know. And don't forget, keep sending me your photos. It is so much fun. So much fun. I have a question to ask you. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you, Nadine. That was very nice. I do love that tiger. I've now planned a series, an African series. I want to do a lion. I want to do a giraffe. I want to do an elephant. Maybe a hippo. Maybe a rhino. I'm not sure. Maybe. Oh, I don't know about a zebra. That's a lot of black and white. But Ah, that's right. Jenny, number is it six or number seven? Oh, Akko is going to work. Oh, Akko is going to finish her month six because next Saturday is month seven's coming out. It's going to be October. Ah! <laughs> oh, Akko likes the idea of a hippo. So, oh, Nadine has two weeks off. Oh, yay, Nadine. We're going to take lots of photos for Nadine. We want to see that. That is wonderful. So we've got Akko's going to work on Jenny Byer. I have a feeling Nadine's going to work, be working with Wool. Don't, Wool, Susan, you can't go to Nadine's house. Susan is allergic to Wool. Don't go near the Wool, Susan. And you know what, Susan? You let us know, you know, how you're going to be feeling and your poor, your poor sinus infection and all that. Oh, you are really having a rough time, girlfriend. I wish I could give you a big hug. I do need to do a flamingo. There you go. I do need to do that. Oh, I'm glad you liked it, Diana. It's coming along, so. Oh. Oh, that's wonderful. Akko. Oh, my gosh. Now, when you say a Wagner or Wagner tuba, is that the tuba's name or the music you're going to be playing? That is fantastic. Oh, so uh, autumn brings rain and wind um, to Nadine. It's perfect. Hole up inside the house. You've done a great job getting all your fall plantings and decor done. And now it's time just for you. I'm so tickled. That's the instrument. I don't know what a wet. You know what? I have to. I'm going to look this up. I can do that. Okay, I always feel so smart when I have the internet. <laughs> a Wagner, okay. Wow. Did I tell you that my daughter has been playing in a community band? She's back to play. Oh, that's a cool looking thing. Okay, I'm, I'm going to show y'all. Oh, my Our little Akko is going to play this great big tuba. Do you see that? Oh, my goodness. That is an unusual looking. How exciting. And it, how expensive. $15,000 shipped directly from the manufacturer. Oh, heck, I'll take two. <laughs> that is so interesting. Oh, wait a minute. Are you ready, guys? Listen. Hold on. It's not as big as I thought.
How cool is that? So it is it is smaller. Okay. So the bell of it's really not much bigger. In fact, it might not be quite as big as a French horn. So it, does it have a sound that's a little bit more like French horn, like in between maybe a French horn and a trombone or what? Thank, thank you for a project board. Thank you. Susan put up a, a, a site to go to find more information out about a project board. It's German. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, wow. He was the father of that. Richard Wagner was the father of that tuba. Wow. Yes. Do you think that um, your, your sweet husband, Jay, Jason, I believe, did maybe he could film your performance? Ooh, that's exciting. Wow. For a certain range of tones. Excellent. More mellow than horn. I love it. That's so great. I tell you what, we are a smart group of women and an accomplished group of women. You're right, Diana. We always are learning something. That's fantastic. Wow. Hot. The world. You know, that's the thing. Please remember. It's a great, big, beautiful world out there. There's so much to experience and learn about and love about this world. Don't let life scare you or get you down. Don't let media scare you or get you down. This is a wonderful world, and there is a whole lot to enjoy about this world. Okay? Don't forget that. So... Yes, I want I want Diana Wright to let us know each step of the way. I got to tell you, Diana, I want you to teach us after you get in the show and you get judged. Would you teach us a little bit about your beaded piping? That's exciting. That's so exciting. But we won't talk about it too much here until you've entered the show. So I'm excited about it. You saw Mark. Yep, he tried to sneak in from the garage. He's getting all prepared. He's got a bike trip coming up before too long, and he's all excited about it. He loves twice a year he goes to the ocean and a place called Topsail Beach, and he loves it. It's his time away. It's his... Oh, good. Okay. Good for you because, you know, it's time before you enter a quilt show. And don't forget, any miters have to be sewn closed. I mean, you know, they they look at everything. Kind of like a proctologist. Oh, Mark just waved, I think. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, Mark's going to have his own retreat. He loves going to Topsail Island. He hangs out and watches old war movies in the hotel. He goes and gets some good seafood. Um, he loves to go and film the ocean, and uh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful, and it's so good for him. Mark is the type of person that puts his all into whatever he does, so he's intense. And this is the one chance he has to go and relax. And remember, yes, we did go camping beginning of September, but when we were there... The water pipe burst and flooded the underneath cubby and all, and he had to then go into town and find a water pipe and repair it and stuff. So he tries to go away where there's no dogs to bother him, where there's no me to bother him. <laughs> he can eat when he wants, sleep where he wants, when he wants, not where, when he wants, eat Whatever meals he wants, it's it's his time. And he goes to the same sweet hotel. They know him. And one of the ladies who works there is a Debbie like me. And so, you know, I know that he's looked out for. And uh, it's really nice. He, well, you know, he spent most of his time while he was being raised. He was born in Canada. Spent most of his time in Michigan. There's not a lot of ocean in Michigan. Although the Great Lakes are big enough, you'd think you were at the ocean. But, um, and then he lived in Texas and Dallas for 27 years. 
So when he gets a chance to go to the ocean, that does it for him. That does it for him. Yeah, good for Diana Wright. Because you know what? The thing is, you've got this many years, certain number of years, whether you use, live them to the fullest or not, it's your choice. And you know what? There is nothing to be afraid of in this world. This is a wonderful, wonderful world. And I know things can seem overwhelming at times, but we have to keep living our most authentic life. And if nothing else, for those who've gone before us, we owe it to them to live our fullest life. So that's what I believe in. So anyway, let me tell you, the Great Lakes are huge. And I just found the other day they were left behind by a large um, glacier that receded and dug them out and left the water behind. <laughs> so... Oh, that is very good. One bite, at, that's how you eat an elephant. One bite at a time. <laughs> if the job is too big. I had a counselor because I tend to be a procrast procrastinator. And I said, how do I, you know, start early on things? She said, you play a game with you. And she said, if you're like me, you do that one thing and you get into it and then you start doing more and more and more. And that's the same thing with cleaning my room. Today, I mean, yesterday, I ironed all of my recently dyed fabrics, which was really good because I saw I did a great job with them. I was so excited, especially the ice dyeing. And, but I ironed them all and put them away. So if I just do one bite at a time, I will have this room totally done. So camping is work. <laughs> Oh, you are. The Great Lakes are, I don't know what the country would do without them. So they are a treasure. That's it. One step at a time. I think Diana Wright has been blossoming. I have watched it with myself. She is blossoming. And I'm so tickled. She deserves it. And she's so talented. She's so talented. So anyway, yeah, the ocean's hard. I was raised, you know, born in Norfolk, raised in Virginia Beach. Then I lived up in Maryland, but right by the Chesapeake Bay and all that. I do miss that. Living more, I'm in closer to slightly western of central North Carolina. I miss the water. We have the Yadkin River, but that's not the same. <laughs> so that's why I like it. We have those little puny lakes to see, but I love it. I, I, I need the water to feel like myself, you know? Who's <laughs> for, oh. <laughs> Aww. I, I love it that Diana Wright is, she's got a golden heart in there that has just been coming out and blossoming. And, it's, it's good for us because that woman has such knowledge and talent. She's blessing all of us with it. So it's a good thing. We're a good group. You know what I like? I know, it's, I know I'm in a good relationship. I know what, when I'm in a good group with you, when we are better than the sum of our, the total is better than the sum of the parts. Together, we reach even higher than we would alone. We encourage each other. We cheerlead for each other. We hold each other accountable sometimes. That is what makes our group so special. It's what makes a relationship, a friendship, anything better. So we... Oh, please go rest easy, Miss Susan. I appreciate. And Miss Susan... Um, I will check my phone, but call me and let me know, especially after you see the doctor. Let me know, because I want you to feel better, darling. It's not good. You're, you're such a doll baby. Wow. But any, anybody that would like to join our group, Susan put the information on there. Susan, go rest. Tell Nikki I said hi. Tell Rick I said hi. Tell him about my poor little tomato. <laughs> but take care of yourself, sweetie. Yes, definitely call and let me know. 
and I'll check, make sure the phone's really hung up. <laughs> but yeah, we want her to take it easy because you know what? She's the heart here. Her and Bonnie and Nadine and Cheryl Lemon. We got so many sunshines in this group, and I love it. So I think I, oh, the spreadsheet. Okay, real quick, I'll bring that spreadsheet up because it's, it's amazing. It shows you how hard Mark, thank God he understands this stuff. So, because I've never taken a, a class or anything in my life. I don't know how to make it smaller, so I'm just going to try to, this is only half of it, but do you see all of this? Let me see if I'm sure. Yeah, and it goes all the way over, and it has all of the days and the meals and all kinds of stuff on it, and it totally makes me crazy. But let me see if I can go all the way to this edge. But here it goes all the way across to here, and it's a lot. <laughs> But let me see if I can go down to the best part of all. Is the best part is this little box right here. And that's the money we're going to bring into the Salvation Army. And I'm so happy. And there'll even be more because we take up a donation that some of the local kids can go to the camp there because when you stop and think the work they do for some of these kids, it's the only meal they eat during the summer is the one they have at camp. So it's really, they give them hope. They give them courage. They give them inspiration. So it's really a good thing. Oh, y'all are all a blessing to me. Thank you so much. This is one of the few things I've done in my life where I feel like I get back more than I give. And that's a joy, you know? That's something to be celebrated. So it makes your head hurt. I'll go, mine too, because I don't think that way. I'm an artist. I'm not a, I'm not a logical, you know? <laughs> but I, I just, y'all are the very best. Oh, thank you. Y'all are so wonderful. Everybody here that makes this group so special. And you, sh everyone who shares photos of the work you love or where you live, something that means something to you. So it's a great. I love you dearly. I'm going to get ready to go. I'm getting hungry. I think I need to go visit Mr. Lou's. And you know what I love? I, don't, I should. That's what I meant to ask you. What was your favorite Chinese food? I love Mugu Gai Pan. Very plain chicken and Chinese vegetables. I love it. <laughs> and pan fried wontons. Be still my heart. So... Oh, thank you. I, I love y'all too. Very, very much. And one day we're going to meet up. We're going to, we're going to do a trip. So we'll have to see when Nadine can fly over and we're going to, we're going to all go to see Missouri star quilts and go see Angela Walters. Yes. We're going to have a great time. Oh, you love Bambus. Hmm. Bam yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, I love wontons. Mm. I just, I love it, love it, love it. So I'm going to get ready and say goodbye. Please do something. Orange chicken. Ooh, I love it. I love it. Oh, Diana, you're so lucky that Marty knows how to do that. I love that. Oh, well, Vicki, you'll meet us there. We're going to have a grand time. We're going to close that shop down. I love it. We'll buy all of their fabric. So have a great week. Do something for yourself. Nadine, I can't wait to see what you create during your time in your studio. It's going to be amazing. And happy birthday to Diana's son. And y'all have a great, great week. Oh, Kung Pao chicken or beef. Ooh, I can't handle that spicy stuff. Mark likes it, but spicy for me, but it sounds good. So y'all are the best. Do something just for you. 
please keep Susan close in your heart. Keep Diane 57 close in your heart. I hope these ladies will get well. I miss them. I miss Diane 57 so much, and I'm worried about my Susan. So keep them close to your heart. Keep Miss Sonia close to your heart. And uh, everybody else, do a, do something great just for you. I'm going to go see a movie this week. I do think I will. I might go see Lion King. Get me all inspired for my African projects, all those animals. So take good care. Take good care of yourself. And pet some fabric. It's always good for your health. Take care. Bye, ladies. Love you. Bye-bye, ladies. Y'all are the best. Mwah.